Hey guys, so I've finally gotten around to filming my festival tips and tricks video. I've only been to a handful of festivals, about four now I think, um, but every time I kind of learned something new or discovered something that's made the whole camping and living in a field scenario that much easier to deal with. So I thought I would share just a few of them with you. So first things first, I want to talk about tents and shelters. Now, even though I, my parents have been taking me camping since I was a little girl, I didn't realise that just because a tent says it's waterproof doesn't necessarily mean it's waterproof. Um, there is a rating system, so I think it's measured in millimetres. Um, and I read on this website that in order to call a tent waterproof, it has to be uh, a minimum of 1,000 millimetres. Um, and a few weeks ago, I went into Trespass to pick up a few different bits and bobs, and I was asking the girl in there about it, and she showed me this tent that was 6,000 millimetres, and she said you could basically turn it into a rowing boat if it was that waterproof. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea about the scale, you know, sort of, you know, where your tent might fall. I think 3,000 is about the average for like a regular sort of four-man tent type thing, um, but obviously you kind of want to go for the highest millimetre you can find because when it tips it down, you're going to thank yourself for spending the extra money. So my kind of second tip or trick would be to actually take a marquee or a shelter with you. Now I know this means carrying around another bag or another like heavy thing, um, so I appreciate that not everybody might want to do that but it honestly it came in so handy so the first few days of download was scorching it was absolutely boiling it was shorts and crop top kind of weather it was unbearably hot so the marquee itself just provided us with some shade which was really nice um, and also then when it started to piss it down we had somewhere to take our wellies off without getting completely drenched and without having to go inside the tent so those are sort of my two tips, look for the most waterproof tent you can get and also if it's possible try and get yourself a shelter or something to actually cover at least the entrance way to your tent because it honestly makes such a huge difference. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, like beds. So I'm really used to having just like the foam roll out mats and my boyfriend and I actually took a blow up bed. Um, both of which I've discovered I will probably never use either of those things again because my best friend Sophie thank you Sophie for this um, she took a I think they're just called a camp bed so basically it's um, just like a strip of this weird fabric stuff with poles either side of it and then little legs coming off the poles so it keeps you raised off the ground which is amazing for a few things really so first things first if your tent does actually leak um, you're raised off the ground. Second, it's a hell of a lot more comfortable than the foam um, mat on the ground. In terms of like ease of setting up, I kind of struggled with mine, but only because I have no arm strength. Um, but it was still quicker than pumping up a blow up bed. Um, also, because it's raised off the ground, you've got like a little bit of space to put um, things underneath it. So whether it's empty bags, clothes, makeup you know it's just like an extra bit of storage gives you a little bit more floor space in your tent um which is really handy especially when you're like me and you're stingy and you don't want to buy a big tent um now probably my most favorite tip um is getting yourself a waterproof poncho since download last year i bought these really cheap i think they were two for five pounds at download um just these little plastic waterproof ponchos super similar to these ones only mine were just clear um, now there's a few reasons why I really like these um, first things first is um, I actually managed to survive all of download this year without any form of waterproof coat or jacket I just just survived with these um, and the reasons I love them so much is because first things first if you've got a rucksack or a bag or anything like that the poncho will go over the top of it um, so Sophie she had a really awesome waterproof coat but of course her rucksack was still on the outside of the coat and also because um, you can't really tuck your arms into a coat properly um, her hands got really cold and wet and, and stuff and I cannot stand having cold hands so that's why I like this because I can tuck my arms inside the poncho and I can just put them in my jacket and I was really toasty my bag didn't get wet it was just good experience I didn't mind being in the rain so much 
Um, also, if you get, I think even this one when you take it out of the packet, it's actually really sheer. So you can take your phone out of your pocket and everything and just have it underneath the poncho and it's not going to get wet. Um, at one point I even had a drink with a underneath the poncho with a straw poking through so I didn't get rainwater in my drink so that was kind of handy. Um, yeah so I just really love them. The only downside to these is that they do tear kind of easily um, so if you want to get like in the crowd or up close and obviously people are like shoving and rubbing up against you and all that kind of stuff so they are prone to tearing. It's not the end of the world because they're so cheap but it can be annoying especially if I've got a spare one on you. So I got this from Trespass. Um, so this was originally $14.99 but it was on half price so I actually bought two of these. Um, I have tried this on, I think I've got a clip of it somewhere. Um, this one isn't quite as sheer as this, so you can't really see your mobile phone actually through it itself, but you can kind of like pull it away and look at it. But the principle still stands, you can still tuck your arms inside, so your hands aren't gonna get wet and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, yeah, I just love it. And it's made out of this really kind of thick plasticky material. So hopefully if I do decide to wear it and actually go in a crowd, it's not going to rip as easily. Yeah, waterproof ponchos, best thing ever kind of going along the same lines so the first day it rained at download I was wearing jeans and I had my wellies on and I put my poncho on over the top but because I was wearing jeans where there was a gap between where my poncho ended and my wellie started my jean got wet now I don't know if any of you have worn wet denim but it is horrible I swear to god it like grates against your skin it feels disgusting your legs get really cold and for some reason denim just loves to suck up water so I was soaked all the way from like the bottom of my uh, jeans all the way up to the crotch it was just horrible if it's raining if you know it's going to be raining try to avoid wearing denim now I even managed to get away with wearing um like a, a dress and some tights um, and then I think on the Sunday I actually wore leggings and they were just great because they get wet they don't really soak the water up per se so it doesn't kind of travel up or down your leg um, and then when the rain actually decides to fuck off and you've got five minutes of like sunshine or of just clouds it actually dries really easily um, I also don't I also find that they're not as uncomfortable to wear when they're wet so that would kind of yeah that's my other tip avoid denim if possible this next tip is kind of um, because doing the wristbanding, I see everybody coming through with all their gear and some people know how to travel really well and others not so much. Getting from the car park to the gate and then from the gate to the campsite can be an absolute nightmare. So my advice there is get yourself a hiking rucksack, like those giant ass rucksacks that you can literally cram everything into because when you've stopped in, in the queue you can just put your bag down on the floor and give your shoulders a break and then you've not got a million and one things to pick up again when the crowd starts moving um, and also kind of leaves your hands free so you know you can get your tickets out and you can do other things. Um, now I personally haven't gone out and bought myself one of those great big rucksacks because I do volunteering um, and I um, camping in the staff camping I'm usually only I'm usually parked in the same field that I'm camping in so I don't have to worry about you know lugging my stuff a great distance but that is just <laughs> something else I would say I have seen people with like wheelbarrows and trailers and, and little things to tug them along and it, it works really well especially if you've got great big wheels um, however I've seen people that it, that where the wheels are just too small and it you know they can't pull it through the mud or um, there's loads of rocks and stones everywhere and things just tip over so for me personally unless you were to get one of those really beastie trailer things with great big wheels on it and it kind of looks like a, a quad bike type thing um, I would probably stay clear of trailers um, unless you know you just have to carry a shit ton of alcohol with you then i suppose you don't have a choice but yeah i would always prefer to carry my stuff in one great big bag if i can finally and this is a bit of a weird one 
Um, I actually took a laundry basket, like a plastic laundry basket with me this year um, and it had all our cooking stuff in it and it was really handy um, just because you could kind of flip it over and use it as a bit of a table and also like if you have gone with like the rucksack idea um, obviously if you don't have enough space to put all your things, all your cooking and this that and the other in your actual rucksack it's not that bad carrying a plastic laundry basket so yeah those are those are kind of all i have written down i'm sure there's loads more um if you have any tips or things that you found really really handy i'd appreciate you leaving them in the comments not just to help anybody else out but potentially to help me out too because i'm not an expert at this so yeah i hope that you guys have found something in this useful if not i just hope you enjoyed my face and watching me blabber on for a few minutes um so that's it. Bye guys. Bye. So bright. So scary. Uh, oh, I've got this light though. Uh, okay. <laughs>